On this episode of the Nugget Project, we're going to put a water to air intercooler into our 1JZ Sora. Okay, to start us off, let's get this out of the way. A lot of people are going to ask why I would put a water to air intercooler into a Sora. You know, water to air usually known for sort of Subarus and GT4s and things where the intercooler usually sat on top of the engine or MR2s and things where the engine's in the back and you can't run a front mount. Well, I did run a front mount on this. Um, I ripped out the old side mount and I put in a decent sized front mount cooler and it was good, but I did it when this was my daily and I kind of rushed it, to be honest. I wasn't happy with the piping. Um, it was okay, it worked. You know, it was a big cooler and it, it did the job. Um, but I've always wanted to run a water to air system. Um, it's just a project I've always wanted to do and I don't have another car that's turbo that I can try it with. Um, I wanted to do it to my GT4 Celica, but I ended up selling that because I needed something more practical, which was sad. So pretty much my excuse for doing this is because I want to, no other reason. Um, there are some benefits to water to wear, um, but the main reason is I just want to and it's my car. So there's your answer. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the hell a water to air system is. Okay, so I'm sure most of you know how a turbocharger works at this point, but a few of you don't, so I'm just gonna give you a very quick turbocharger 101. Please excuse my crude drawing, it's terrible. Here's your engine. Exhaust gases come out and go into our very <laughs> crude little turbo here. The exhaust gases um, spin the exhaust turbine um, and then go out the exhaust. That turbine is connected to the uh, compressor wheel. The compressor wheel compresses air and goes through our intercooler and then up into our throttle body, into the engine, more air, more gas, more bang, more blow, more power. More power, baby. Um, so this is what you'd call a standard intercooler. Bear with me. Yeah, This filthy thing here is my old front end intercooler. My God, it is filthy. Um, so this is what I was running on the car. It's a pretty basic, cheap unit. Um, but if you look inside, basically air goes in spreads out through all those fins um, and comes out the other side nice and cool and the air coming through the front of the car cools that charged air. Air coming from a turbocharger is extremely hot. Hot air is not dense, doesn't burn as well and is nowhere near as efficient. Plus you can get things like detonation happening, all sorts of bad stuff. Hold that thought. So this is our front, is our, sorry, our water to air intercooler. I'll pop the caps off and if you look inside, it is exactly the same thing. So this is just a smaller version of that, but the difference is obviously you can't see the fins. So what this is, is this is surrounded in a water jacket. So instead of using air to cool our charge, we are using water. So the water doesn't touch the intake air. It's all completely sealed, so it's just air coming through the engine, but we've got these inlets, inlet and an outlet here. And so the water, uh, cold water will be pumped in, it'll cool those fins, go back down and then that goes down to its own separate radi radiator or a heat exchanger down in the front bar and that uses a pump. Um, water is a much better conductor of heat so it gets rid of heat a lot better than air. Um, obviously if we're going a million miles an hour on a racetrack, a big front mount like that one I just showed you is really good because you're getting constant cold flowing air through the front. On a street car like this where we're not going a million miles an hour, I wish I could, I live in Victoria, I get pinged for 1K over. Um, something like this is much more efficient. So when you're in traffic, when you can't boot around flat out, this will constantly cool our intake temperatures using water. And because it's going down to the front bar, we'll still need uh, air to come through that heat exchanger, but we don't need it as much as running a straight air to air front mount. Does that make sense? That is a water to air intercooler. One second. Okay, welcome to more crude drawings. So here's exactly the same setup, but now we have a water jacket around our intercooler and these lines go off to our radiator in the front bar. We have a little water pump that pumps the water around constantly and basically cools that water, keeping our intake, keeping our intercooler cool and cooling down our intake temperatures. Water to air intercooler 101. Rightio, so what is in this kit? These are all the parts I've been gathering for the past month, I'd probably say. Um, 
The only thing I'm missing is the heat exchanger, which is currently off at the dudes down the road getting some um, brackets tacked onto it because it didn't come with any, which is a bit crap, but what can you do? So we have our water wear into core. Um, these are pretty much, I think, all the pipes and joiners I'm going to need to make it fit. That's our stock airflow meter with uh, an adapter I got from our mates at Line Performance. We also have our hoses to run our water from there down to our heat exchanger. Here we have a cool little pump. So this is our water pump that's going to make the water go around. Um, apparently it's a good unit. I have no way of knowing, but fingers crossed it works well. Um, we also have um, this big pipe, which I think I'm going to need, which I'll show you in a minute. This one is very cool. This is a J-pipe delete. What the hell is a J-pipe? I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is a remote filler. So we've got our pipes that go to our heat exchanger. We need to get water in it. So that is basically just like a radiator cap water filler. Um, we've got some wiring for our pump. And then I treated myself to a brand new turbo smart blower valve. I think this is a... Uh, compact jewel. So the cool thing about this is you can run it as a open atmosphere, you can run it as an open atmosphere and a plumb back, or you can run it as a pure plumb back. Um, I will plumb this back into the system as I am a fan of um, being legal and all that sort of stuff. So I'll probably get a pipe welded onto this and that'll go back into our intake. Um, but for now, we might make some choo-choo noises for a little bit. And we have our K&N air filter. Um, that's actually off of my XL and I've got a new one for the XL which is a little bit smaller. Um, this one is gonna go on the sawer because it's bigger. Right, how does all that fit in there? So in our engine bay, I have done a few things to make this work a bit better. Um, currently, I've just got all this old stuff sitting in here. We'll go through that in a second. But one of the big things I had to do was replace our fan. So this is a brand new fan setup. The old fan is this guy over here. So it is a mechanical fan that bolts onto the front of the engine, spins with the engine, um, and has this big old um, shroud and all that. And I just wanted to get rid of it. I wanted to modernize this car. Let's turn this lovely Warby light on. Hopefully you guys can see a bit better. So this is an electric thermo fan set up, actually out of an AU Falcon. It's probably the only good thing about AUs. Sorry, AU fans, I can't stand them. Um, they're very good fans. I actually use these in drag racing because they're so bulletproof and efficient. Um, so I got this off uh, Gumtree, about 40, 50 bucks or something. Um, dual fan setup, and I basically made it fit onto the radiator here. Um, I 3D printed these little brackets, uh, which hold it in, clamps down the bottom, and I've wired it into a system. Now, obviously, we don't have electric fan normally, so I am running this, which is our Davies Craig um, fan control unit. I actually suggested this one to Scotty at Street Machine and he's using it now in the Valiant Ute, in Dad's Ute, on our uh, carnage channel that I film on. Um, so this unit uses a little temperature probe, which we've got down there, and you can set the temperature. It's got two relays and that basically kicks the fan in at, fans in at certain temperatures. Um, I've wired it all up nice and neat. Let me just pull my old airbox out. We won't be needing this anymore. I'll explain that soon. Um, and I have got this nice little loom all wrapped here and that runs power to the control unit, but it'll also run power to this, which is for our water pump. And then that's all wired into the positive terminal of the battery. And I'm just waiting for my ECU to come back from my friend, Justin, who's recapping it. And that will be our ignition source. So the fans won't turn on without the car turned on. Um, so that's all wrapped up nice and neat. Now I mentioned our J pipe delete. This big ass monstrosity here is a J pipe. Um, it's part of the intake system. So our turbo, you see it's not bolted up at the moment. Turbo um, brings in air through this. So basically we've got the air box usually here. We have a pipe that comes up and goes onto here, goes through our J pipe into the turbo. It's, it's a lot of unnecessary weight and mess. Um, and I wanted to get rid of it. It's quite a common thing to do on these cars. So. I'm ditching that and using our little J-pipe delete. So this one single pipe here will replace that entire monstrosity, which is a much neater option. This thing here is our stock blower valve, which is average at best. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, and what that'll also do is allow room for our intercooler. So our intercooler is actually gonna sit here. So we need to move all that. The other reason I want to get rid of the fans is because I need to get our intake pipe from there 
across and to our intercooler. And obviously with that whole fan shroud in the way, it wasn't gonna work. So that was the other reason for putting this bad boy in. Anyway, let's get this old stuff out and see how we're gonna fit everything. Okay, now with that J-pipe off, you can see how much more room we have for activities with just using that J-pipe delete. So we can bolt that on. Um, it's still very tight in this area for the water to air intercooler. I originally wanted to try and fit the intercooler here in front of the engine, but it just doesn't fit. I mean, the, the radiator hose is in the way. There's a lot of stuff in the way. I thought it was gonna clear here a bit more. It didn't. The smaller one would have fit, but it was a much lower horsepower rating. I think this one's rated for 500 and so, more power, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Cool, so we're gonna bolt that on and the next part is figuring out how this is all gonna fit. What I need to do is I've got our airflow meter, one of them. And so, our, that pipe is a little 45 degree, 45? Yeah, sure. And that's gonna go there. And so that'll aim the pipe into this cavity. We have to cut these up a bit, but then that'll join to that. And then our air filter will go there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cardboard template for an air box here. Send that over to my dad, cause he is just loving aluminium welding at the moment. I'm gonna get him to weld me up a alloy box, which will be very cool. Um, he wants a project, so he's gonna get a project. One little thing I will mention is, um, to secure our airflow meter, you can see here, it's got these little um, brass uh, nutsert things in there. It only had one for whatever reason, and I'm gonna have to make a bracket down here to secure that to the car. So what I did is I bought these other nutserts, these other three off of eBay, and I just used a soldering iron and heated and then pushed them into the plastic, and when they cool, they secure in there well. So there's a cool little tip for you. If you wanna do anything into plastic, just use a soldering iron and melt those in and it gives you a thread. Okay, cool, so I've kind of got the intake where I want it. I don't have the air filter on at the moment, but uh, that's pretty much where I want it to sit. <laughs> you really should have got a sharper blade for cutting these pipes, it's terrible. Anyway, Nitty is gonna sit pretty much on top of that. Um, so that sits good. I'm gonna make some brackets that go down here and I'm gonna put a couple of nut sets in there and that'll hold the weight of the um, airflow meter. But there is a little bit of flex in there, not much, but it's enough that when the engine moves, hopefully it won't damage anything. Um, I might even rubber mount that bracket just so everything can move a little bit. Uh, cool. So next thing I've done is this pipe usually comes forward. This is the stock pipe. Um, I've flipped it around because the way our intercooler is going to sit is here. We're actually going to have to do a U-turn and then back into the cooler and then down and across and over to the throttle body. Uh, I've done a vague test fit here and it seems to work well. And this also gives us a port for our blow off valve. Now the blow-off valve really should be as close to the throttle body as possible. Maybe later on I'll weld a bung over there and put a blow-off valve over there, but this one is sitting right here and it works. So I want to basically just stick my blow-off valve right there and that should work fine. And we've also got our um, vacuum line there for it straight from the turbo. Perfect. Uh, cool. Anyway, let's try and figure out how the hell this is all gonna fit together. Okay, so I'm test fitting all the piping and this is pretty much where I want the cooler to sit, somewhere around there. I don't want it to be hitting anything. So I'm gonna make a bracket that goes from here to the strut tower, kind of support the top. And then we've got another one of these on the bottom, which I'm gonna kind of make a bracket that goes to here and down and something. That's gonna be the tricky part. But anyway, the rest of it is pretty good. So this pipe I'll need to shorten up and this steel uh, alloy pipe I'll have to shorten up. So this doesn't fit in so far that way. It'll go that way a bit more. Um, I've had to put this kink in it to get it underneath the uh, radiator hose, but it's fairly symmetrical and should look pretty good. So that all works. That's really good news. Uh, and what I'm gonna do with the piping is I'm gonna go through grades of sandpaper, clean it all up and try and get it polished up. Um, same with this, I'm gonna polish all this up and try and make it all shiny and sexy and junk. So that fits really well. Now we've got our, whoa, where is it? Somewhere here. So we've got a U-pipe there, so I'm gonna have to trim this back a fair bit. And that'll sit somewhere like that. And then we just need one pipe to connect those together. And that 
is pretty much how it should work. Oh, before I get too excited, our heat exchanger is back. I got this back from the guys at Axentac um, in Laverton. Super duper nice guys. They, um, they built a bunch of cars over there. The little workshop is super clean. Um, they, they're all drifters and they're yeah, really nice blokes. They're cool. So, and I think the, the welds speak for themselves. Like really, really nice quality welds. So I've got those two tabs on the top, which will hold the weight of the heat exchanger. And now I've got those ones on the back, which will stop it flapping around. And then we've got our ports on the outside, which will run these fittings. And that'll supply the water back to the engine bay. But yeah, really good job. Well done, Axentac. Love your work. Good stuff. Okie dokie, so it's the next morning. Uh, I had to call it quits yesterday because I was finally meeting up with my mates after like eight months of being in lockdown. So it was really good to see them all, even though I'm feeling a little worse for wear today. But never mind that. Anyway... So it's very hard to film all this and do the work, as you can imagine. Um, I need another one of me to film. But we've got this all in place, like I showed you earlier. Um, so I've made up a bracket that goes from, I don't know what that was for, it was mounted something, and goes down, it sort of does a weird little loop and then bolts down here. Um, and then the bolt goes through the middle and basically holds that in, and then just a little alloy bracket from the strut tower just to support it. But that is super solid in there and that bracket takes all the weight. It doesn't rest on that pipe. It's got a bit of clearance under there. So that is perfect. Um, yeah, as we said, we um, spun this pipe around. We've got a nice U-turn here um, and a straight pipe. That's our vacuum line for our um, blower valve. Where is my blower valve? There it is. So this guy will sit right there. Nice and neat. I might do a little support bracket for it just so it doesn't hang off the pipe. Um, but yeah, that should work out really well there. That's perfect. It's the next day and I'm feeling a lot better now. Oops. Cool. So um, I did have a bit of a fiddle with the car yesterday and I have put in a rivet nut and bolted down this. That all fits really nicely. Very happy with that. Next thing we need to work out was the filler neck. So the the cap basically needs to be at the highest point of the cooling system so i didn't want to put it off of this one because the whole cooler is tilted that way that's lower than this point and so I, i've only got several of these these connectors um so i'm going to run like this i was looking at running it to here but then i couldn't get the hose to run down smoothly so even though it looks a little bit gangly here but hopefully once we get an air box here it'll make it all look a bit nicer um, we're coming straight out of the cooler. I'm going to do a right angle and I'm going to run the pipe under the filter and out through a hole which will go down to the front bar and down to a heat exchanger. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my plan with that. Um, but before I run any more hoses, I really need to get a heat exchanger in the front of the car. one hurt I was just drilling this out I had it laying down there and the drill caught swung this whole thing around and put a hole in my shin so that freaking sucked I just wasn't paying attention anyway these things happen so we now have two brackets so then they're gonna hang down from there and there bolt up to there so we can hang a heat exchanger Alrighty, so our heat exchanger is all in there and secure. Just made some little, uh, oh, sorry, just made some little brackets here for the bottom, um, and then obviously the brackets we made for the top. Can you see them through there? Probably just. There we go. There's one there and one there, and that is sitting in there really nicely and really secure too. It is 
not moving. It's rock solid, so that's perfect. Um, I've run uh, the top hose there that goes up, and I haven't secured it yet, but it actually runs really smoothly. We can sort of see it there. Runs through, up behind the headlight, and up, and to here. So I haven't cut it yet, but that's pretty much what that'll do. And then, I've got our next hose, which comes out the, ow, which comes out the bottom here. Um, and this is the one that's gonna have to go to our pump. Now, I've had a real trouble trying to find out where to mount this bugger. And I've come up with a solution after quite a while of digging. So the pump needs to be low, so I need it to be around here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is we've got this little, it's got this rubber mounting bracket. I'm actually gonna mount it here, which is part of this big metal tow hook, which is like far out, like eight mil thick steel. Um, and on this point here, because I just need the one bolt. So yes, it's got that one bolt hole on the top. So I'm actually gonna drill into this steel plate um, and then run a tap through it. And then I can just basically bolt directly to that because that is a solid piece of uh, metal. It's not going anywhere. And this pump's not very heavy. So hopefully we can bolt it up. We can just loop this pipe around here without kinking. So this is, uh, I might use the gates hose because it's a bit nicer. Um, and then connect that up and then that pump faces straight up and goes up. So let's give it a go. Alrighty, there we go. We have a pump, we'll bolt it up. Looks good. So now we run the wires and run some hoses. Almost there. So that last bit of footage you saw was nine months ago. And then I kind of put the video on hold because I had to go and do a bunch of stuff for work. I had to go away. Then my little Impreza I was daily driving actually blew up, like it blew the head gasket, so Subaru things. So I ended up having to rebuild that, um, and I got that back together, and I actually made the car really good, and then for some reason I sold it, and I bought this thing. So this is a 2005 GT Liberty, and I love it, it's a car I've always wanted, but this one doesn't work, it has issues. That's a story for another time. But, the Sora is actually kind of done. So, in the last video you saw, we found out the turbo was blown. So I got hold of a, a second hand turbo and put it on there. Now I did finish the water air end cooler system, I'll show you that in a second. And I took it for a quick drive and that turbo was screaming. Unfortunately that turbo was also dead, which sucks. So I ripped it out and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to stuff around anymore. And I contacted Glenn at Munro Racing Turbochargers up in Queensland and said, can you build me a turbo? Because I've always wanted one of his turbos. And he did. So. We sent that turbo up to him and he rebuilt me, he built me a turbo based on a CT26 out of a GT4 Celica. It's got that core, and it's got the CT15B, which I think is on this, the housing, billet compressor wheel, expanded house, uh, wastegate housing, basically everything. It's, it's a fully built turbo and it is awesome. So I'll put some pictures up on the screen of that, which you've probably seen. Um, and that turbo is now in there. Unfortunately, it's all hidden under my intercooler, but Take my word for it, underneath there is a beautiful Munro Racing turbocharger, um, which is a bit spicy. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. So our water to air intercooler system is all in. Uh, it's all plumbed up. We've got the um, control units here with relays. So when the ignition comes on, that starts up the pump. The system flows well. I do want to make this bracket a bit nicer. It's a bit of a dodgy bracket. I want to make a nice, um, just a nicer piece there. Um, our blower valve, I did get plumbed back in, so I did take the J pipe down to the guys at Axon Tack and they welded in a bung there. So now it is a full plumb back blower valve, which is nice. Um, I made some nice little 3D printed clamps there to hold all the hoses and everything in line. Um, I haven't built an airbox yet, that is on the list. Um, just not a full priority at the moment. But yeah, it's it works and it flows really well. I've only driven the car, obviously, since the turbo blew, I only took it for one drive and then that was the end of that. I have taken it on a little bit of a drive with the new turbo, however, it seems to be boosting really high. Um, so I've got to look into that. 
what I have done in the meantime is, let's go inside the car, I installed a wideband oxygen gauge. So all cars have, all modern cars have an oxy sensor. What a wideband does is it gives you a much bigger range of what your air fuel ratio is doing. So there's a wideband oxygen sensor in the exhaust now, which I got a bung welded in by Axon Tack as well. Um, and now that can give us actual proper readings. The cool thing about this one is it actually has somewhere down here, a USB cable, which I can plug into my laptop and I can actually data log what my air fuel ratios are doing, which is really important to be able to see. The downside is I can't data log my boost levels and my air fuel ratio unless I go and buy the boost gauge from that brand, which I don't want to go spending another $300 on a boost gauge. But I do have my GFB um, boost control here, which isn't hooked up, but the, the vacuum line is, so I can read my boost levels. So what I want to do is, since I have a bunch of cameras, I'll set up cameras in the car, I'm going to take it for a drive, I can data log and I can have a camera pointed at my boost gauge, and I can kind of get an idea now of what my air fuel ratios are doing compared to my boost, etc., etc., just to make sure everything's safe because that turbo is pretty spicy. I was seeing um, spikes up to 20 psi, which is a bit much on a stock fuel system. So, anyway, I'm going to take it for a drive and see how that all goes. But let's get the keys. I can show you the. Uh... Let's turn the ignition on. I'm not too sure if you guys can hear. You hear that humming and that is our water to air system circulating through here and yeah it just works great so i've got the, the on off switch you can probably hear yeah a little pump going and that'll just circulate water through that um that front cooler setup and through here and it works really well i when i did drive it i sat in traffic for a little bit came back in put my hand on it and that cooler is cold as I actually did a run where I forgot to turn it on, came back and the cooler was really hot. Flicked it on, within 30 seconds the cooler was cold again. So it's an efficient system, it works really well. Anyway, um, I think we're going to leave it there. I know that's a bit of an anticlimactic end to the video, and it was a long video so I don't want to push it any further. But what we'll do is we will go for a drive in this car and we'll do some data logging of the air fuel ratios and then hopefully i'll try and get a bit of nice footage of the car driving just so you can see it it sounds amazing it's so cool i'm i'm in love so i want to start driving this at least one day a week to work just give it a run and keep it going anyway thanks for watching guys so it's a bit of a mishmash of a video but uh check back and we'll uh we've got a one gauge system to put in this car which is very exciting i'm just uh, 3d printing a box to fit here to hold the circuit board and that'd be a cool thing so check back for that thanks for watching